Okay, here's uh, more on citing and measuring and transferring. Uh, a couple reminders that uh, I am starting from a, uh, a photograph because it helps to learn and practice the, base, the basic principles without um, adding confusion uh, of, that comes into play when there are other, other challenges, I should say, possible confusion that can come into play when you're drawing from life. Um, so I am drawing from a photograph. And the other thing I want to say is that I'm drawing in, in direct proportion. I'm drawing exactly um, the dimensions that are the same as the dimensions on this photograph. Eventually we'll talk about how to resize things and keep them in the correct proportion. But once again, that's, that's a later lesson. So as uh, I think I talked about in the last um, tutorial, I'm going to, what I want to find is the boundary space, bounding box, notional space, basically a, a rectangle that will for this drawing, encompass this entire group of things that I'm wanting to draw. Last time we practiced just um, creating a bounding box around one stone because that's all we, that we were drawing. Um, and in this case, I want to draw this entire group. So I'm going to start with um, finding the bounding box around this. And you can tell I've already done that. Um, I've erased out the lines to, to just to sort of go over it again. But what I want to find is um, the topmost point of this group of objects. Here, let me let me start here first. Actually, this is uh, really quite helpful to to use your pencil once again to just start scanning and coming down. And, and it's pretty pretty easy to find the top and the bottom. It helps. It's going to help sometimes. I mean, this is. This is kind of tricky to, to see that the line along here is almost horizontal, but not quite. So comparing this horizontal pencil with this group of objects, I can tell that that's not quite horizontal. And I can tell that it seems to me the the lowest point is sort of down here. It gets kind of confusing down in the shadows here and whatnot, but but that's okay. And same thing for um, for right to left. I'm going to um, scan this group of objects from the left to the right in this particular case. Either way is fine, uh, of course. So I am I can see that the, the leftmost point is there for this group. And the rightmost point is here. It's pretty, it's kind of, you could, um, this is where when things start getting close, it really helps to scan things and, um, and using your pencil in a vertical fashion as well as a horizontal fashion. I will say um, it's good to know the following terms, the um, of what a uh, what's called a plumb line. Plumb line is is um, a line that is is just what we're going to refer to as our straight vertical line. And I'll either say horizontal line or level. I might call it the uh, the level level line. And that's going to come in. Um, when we're identifying other things about how to, how to draw this particular group of objects. But just for now, now that I'm sort of scanning horizontally and scanning vertically, and I am finding the outer edges. For the left point, I'm going to create a vertical line. Also, it could be referred to as a plumb line. And similar over here on the on the right. And I'm gonna up on the top I have that line and down here on the bottom. It's probably
probably a little hard to see, but I'm creating that line down there. So now that I know that um, this boundary box, this rectangle is this notional space, whichever you want to call it, is um, is the amount of space that I'm going to want it to uh, transfer and then start drawing in my 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 group of stones with with more information as well so um, the other the other piece I like to do with my notional space is is determine the um, the midpoint and break it up into quadrants and this is sort of a good example of when it, it it's going to be pretty close I think to where the top of this actual the, the notional space is but it's not in my estimation it's not quite exact so they're pretty close to each other but not quite exact like I just said not more than <laughs> a few seconds ago um, let's see so if I want to find the uh, the midpoint for the uh, the plumb line the vertical here um, oh, I think I already had it in here, but let's see. Does um, that equal that? Nope. Gotta come down here. Try that again. Maybe from there to there. There to there. So that right there looks more like the midpoint to me. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to draw a really crooked line is what I'm going to do. Now, kidding aside, let's, um, let's be a little smarter about that. Let's see if I can, um, double check that distance from there to there and that distance from there to there. I don't know if you, um, I may be cutting off your view, but either way, somewhere in this vicinity, I'm going to call it good just to move on with the, with the video. Um, either that or I'm not going to do that. Sometimes I, uh, I fake people out like that. clean that up a little bit with my needed eraser um, which maybe brings up a good point once again all these construction lines I'm keeping really light uh, I would keep them even lighter than I'm doing here in this demonstration but um, they're gonna erase very easily so that's that helps um, so the other piece of information before I start, before I'm even going to transfer this drawing or try to create this drawing, I'm still gathering some critical information. So I've uh, gathered information about the bounding box. I determined information about midpoints and uh, breaking it up into four equal quadrants. And the other piece that I want to do is start looking for other landmark points, other important places in this group of drawing where something occurs, an event happens, and in particular something that I'm going to be able to, to find again quite easily, uh, a point on here where I'm going to be able to find quite easily. And right off the bat, a couple points that I know I could find quite easily is where this stone meets this stone. Another point is where this stone meets this stone. Another point is the farthest left of this middle stone, as well as the farthest right of this middle stone. Farthest right of the top stone. Farthest left, did I say right? I don't, I don't know, either way. Um, farthest left of the top stone. Oh heck, let's find the bottom of each stone too, the bottoms and the tops. Um, there is, which will sort of help us, hopefully not confuse us, and to, to know that there's overlapping going on here. 
you know, this stone overlaps the middle stone and similar fashion down here. So sometimes you're going to run into a situation where it's what you're looking for. If I'm looking for the top of this bottom stone, <laughs> that was fun to say, top of the bottom, um, it's going to be hidden. I'm going to have to use my x-ray vision. I just said x-ray vision. Um, that was fun. Either way, I'm going to have to sort of imagine that. And since I'm an artist, I can do that. And since you're human, you, you can imagine that. I'm going to find a couple other obvious points. There's one there. Sort of one way in there, huh? And for these points, what I'm going to start doing is continuing this um, idea of dropping, dropping, uh, drawing plumb lines and level lines. They say dropping. A lot of times that's what they say, drop a line, you know, that's to indicate that it's a, a vertical dropping down this way, falling. Anyways, sometimes people say pull a line, all, all sorts of interesting things for the verb drawing but the point being is that I'm gonna um, I'm gonna see where they uh, where it crosses over my bounding box I'm gonna determine where these points are to help me determine this overall shape and I'm gonna do the same with with this one a vertical there and over here too, that one's pretty close to the bounding box. So what I'm, I can, and what I'm going to do once again is use this handy dandy tool that will help me determine if I've drawn an accurately straight up and down line, both by the fact that I know that this pencil is straight and I know that the sides of my paper are straight and I can easily relate that to each other similar with horizontal. Speaking of which, let's um, create a couple of level lines that are going to help us identify some of these other points. And this, since this video is uh, getting plenty long, I'm going to call it right there, eh, maybe not quite, but I am going to pause for a second and just kind of make sure I've, I've cleaned up this, this enough and made this clear enough to, of, of how to, to track down these points and how to plot them in this, within this notional space. And um, we'll be back soon.